it is a festival of hearts and minds. Why festival? Because festival already has kinetic energy and it promises movement, joyfulness and connectedness. The society gets more complicated and less cohesive, dialogue becomes even more centrally important. People being in the room together, applying their minds and their intellect, their, their hearts to some of these issues. It's just getting us to have a platform outside political leadership and that is sorely needed on the African continent. Sometimes you need ideas that are, that are different from the ones that you are used to. So being here is really to get that stimulation. It's got economists, it's got political people, it's novelists, uh, people interested in music. It brings the opportunity for people to sit side by side with difference in a, in a, in a civil discourse. You see leaders who lead with their heart. Um, and so it's an incredibly warm and inspiring and deeply intelligent and caring group of individuals. It's about advancing human possibility. You are looking truly at placing the human at the center of every conversation you're having. I think it was Audre Lorde who said we don't have the luxury of living a single issue life. We don't have the luxury of living a single issue life as Africans, as South Africans, as humans on the continent. Our mission is to end malnutrition. We know how to solve the problem of poverty. We've done it before. The free movement of goods and services and the regulation that's going to allow that to happen is nowhere near possible at the moment. There has to be a special effort to create a common nation of the public values that we can all identify with. It's the hope that by putting an extraordinary group of human beings together in beautiful surroundings that they can inspire one another to say, actually, either we have renewed hope that we can solve problems that we thought were intractable, or I have kind of walked away with a few new ideas I'm going to experiment with. You have priests talking at the same time that you have scientists talking, and then you have uh, a composer deconstructing Amazing Grace at the same time. A politician is talking about how to have a more effective government. It is the careful mixing of all of these different strands that appeal to both the heart and to the mind. When we, we, we come together with one focus, yeah, a lot of time it can be very effective. And there is a lot of science of the power of diversity. It allows you, you to see problems from different angles. So it's great to have people who have actually experienced uh, encountering and dealing with that issue, discussing the problem as they see them. It's not what they say when they're on the stage, uh, but it's when that becomes a trigger for a more personalized exchange of information that it really becomes valuable. Those of us whom I call the business illiterates, for whom all this money business is arcane territory. It's good for us to mix from time to time, and I take every opportunity to try and understand. We need to really understand deeply what's going on with all of the geopolitical challenges, to share that information and our personal insights, to be able to piece the whole puzzle together and make sure we're taking the right steps. I feel that this festival, at its core, is a, a vehicle for activism. Artists, creative practitioners, are useful and necessary in society because they prick our conscience. We have come to terms of using art as a tool to reconstruct what was destroyed. We have the courage to face facts and face the truth, however painful it may be, because that's the beginning of healing. Political morality begins when one is able to identify with any people anywhere in the world without hedging, without fudging, without relativism. If we're talking about best and brightest leaders and the need for them to enter public service, then presumably we're all more or less agreeing on the importance of leadership and we're not subscribing to the idea that everything that happens in the world is down to the faceless forces of economics. If your political system is dysfunctional, then you know your chances of being successful are very little. It is the younger leaders who are going to get us there. The sort of people who are forward-thinking, who are modern in their outlook, who 
exemplify the ideas of uh, humaneness and kindness and, and generosity and sacrifice. We may not solve cancer in the four days we are together, but there may be people who leave the place with new ideas about how to collaborate to solve other kinds of problems that they are facing in their respective geographies or societies. And so to me, that's worth it. If, if we're not making change, it's dangerous. Many of us are secure in continuity, and in fact, it should be the opposite. Knowledge is always important, but doing is even more important. If a handful of us can come back next year and say, this is what I have started and this is where I am, that really will be great investment. We are planting seeds and the forest will grow. And, and it really doesn't matter whether those trees grow in our lifetime, but we have a responsibility to plant the seed.